Thank you for recording, David. Trudy, how are you? Very well. I'm really glad to be speaking with all of you. The Mule Skinners, I love it. The oldest Democratic club. Trudy, they, when they arranged this, I, I was told just to turn the floor over to you and it, without introduction, you do your own introduction. And then if you have time for questions, it'd be great, uh, but we understand you're under time crunch. So I'll let you have it. I'll say the floor, but the, whatever the floor is in a car, <laughs> you have it. Okay. What would you like to say? Okay, so, you know, we're getting close to the end of our campaign and we vote on August 2nd. So I'm hoping that I get your vote, but let me just tell you a little bit about why I'm running and why I got into this race. And it was because I saw how broken our politics were and how much vitriol there was and meanness. And I saw our country disintegrating during those six years with Trump and January 6th, uh, we almost lost our democracy and we are still, our, our voting rights are still being threatened and we have so much healing to do. We need to work together and, and, uh, and stop all the divisions so that we can get the work that needs to be done. And I want to serve Missouri families uh, and I want to serve the United States and keep our democracy strong and our voting rights sacred. So that's why I'm in, but all, all across uh, the area, I'm seeing so many of the same problems across Missouri as I've traveled and I've traveled a lot. I've been in Kansas City going again, been to Springfield, to Columbia, to um, Manette, to Mexico, to Kirksville, um, and St. Louis, just every place that I can get to, Montgomery County too. And so I think the same things we're talking about everywhere. The, the real issues that people are worried about are inflation. People are worried about the right to choose. All across Missouri, we have a huge opioid epidemic going on and people are always worried and concerned about the quality and affordability of good health care and keeping prescription drugs costs down. And I'm a nurse and that's why I'm in this race. I we, we don't need any more politicians. We don't need any more lawyers. We need someone new and, um, and something different. And I'm rooted in values in wanting us to come together. Um, I think people of Missouri want values. They want decency. They, they, they want respect. They want honesty. They want integrity. And I think people finally want to vote for the content of a person's character and not all the crazy things that we're seeing from the, from the other side. And if you wanna ask me more questions about any of those things or uh, other questions that you have, I would appreciate it. Or other concerns or issues, please tell me. All right, I appreciate that, Trudy. So we, this sounds like at this point, the floor is open for questions. So what questions people have for Trudy now that we've got her here? I'll look for, okay, Herb Tillema has a question. Go ahead, Herb. Welcome to the race. Thank you very much. Coming in. Coming in. Um, you, as one other candidate, do not have prior experience in elected office, but I don't know what experience you may have had in Washington, D.C. and on Capitol Hill. Since it's best to begin as you would continue, could you tell us how you are knowledgeable about how to begin? Well, I love history. I read a lot of history. I've watched politics my whole life. I read the New York Times. I read the Post-Dispatch. I read everything I can about what's going on in our country. And you're right, I'm not a politician. I never dreamed I would be a politician. But I think my life has been all about service, uh, serving others, helping others, being in organizations where I've had leadership positions. I think it's about um, leadership that brings people together and that, that brings the best out in people. And I would say I've been a servant leader all my life. And I feel that we don't need any more politicians and we don't need any more lawyers and we need something different because things are not working as they are. 
and I'm learning a lot every day. I'm a lifelong learner. I will continue to learn, but my mind has been open to so many of the issues that are going on in Missouri and so many of the hopes and the concerns. And that's what I'm doing in order to be able to run for this position. I'm listening to other people from all over Missouri. I'm talking to state representatives. I'm talking to state senators. I'm talking to mayors because in the end, they will know their constituents better than I will. I will not always be out, be able to be out and about in Missouri. I will come back and get out as much as I can, but those legislators will be the ones that will be able to tell me where the needs are and what I can do at a federal level. I've met presidents, I've sat next to presidents. My father was a huge Democrat, knew Harry Truman really well, President Roosevelt, President Johnson, President Kennedy. I grew up in a life filled with politics. Thank you. Uh, Pam Springsteel has a question, Pam. I have a couple of things. One, have by any chance, have you talked to Claire McCaskill? Yes, can I answer that one first? Please. Claire McCaskill was the first person I called um, after uh, on, the, on the day after that I entered the race. And to be honest, because I talked to so many people, the second person I called was Senator Danforth because of his letter to the editor, editor saying that we needed an independent to run. And um, he told me he was going to get an independent to run. And I knew that was going to be an independent Republican. And he, I wonder if, it, if there's some problem with your... And Go ahead. And, uh oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. And so what, what Senator McCaskill and I have known and talked to her quite a few times, she said, whenever you don't know something, say you don't know it. Nobody knows everything. It's better, it's better to let people know that you will find out the answers, that you will, will get to answers, that you will confer with other people. And I'm always reminded of that. If I don't know, I will ask. And I will get a good, strong group of people around me and on my team. And I will get people together that are specialized in different areas, uh, like healthcare, like nursing, and like uh, addiction specialists. I think there's so much that we can do across Missouri. I think some cities and towns are doing it better than we're doing it in other places. Let's all get together with the best of things and then somehow spread that across Missouri so we can all get on the same page to, to make big differences in education and in the opioid epidemic and in healthcare. My other question has to do um, with, with uh, gun safety. And I know in, in Missouri, it's really hard to, come, to speak about this topic. I think that there are a lot of um, citizens of Missouri that are so afraid that Democrats are gonna take away their guns. So what do you say to them? So I grew up in a family of hunters. I hunted um, and my children are all hunters but they, they took the hunter safety classes too uh, before they got guns. And when they, got, when they had guns, they went out with their dad and they were taught more and so much about safety and the need to lock up guns when we had them in the house. That was always a rule. And, um, and I am not against people hunting at all. Uh, my kids hunt for deer. We eat the deer that we kill. If we have too many of the white-tailed deer, we'll have wasting disease. A lot of hunting is good because it's good for conservation. And if people wanna go out and tar target practice, that's all fine with me. My biggest worries is about the crime and the guns in the cities and, and in areas where crime is so high. I think we've got to do everything we can to end that. But my hugest concern is about the mass killings that we've had of children and teachers in school, of people in parades, of people at the grocery store. It can happen anywhere. 
and no 18, 19, 20 year old needs to ever have a military assault rifle in their hands. And we've had some bipartisan agreement on some gun control, but I think we need more legislator, legislation in that way. And then we have to look at the mental health of people and maybe we need hours, like four or five days between the time someone can buy a military assault rifle and, and the time that they can actually buy it. And there's gotta be more background checks. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Schneeberger has a question or a comment. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, David. I have only one question. Um, will you overturn the filibuster in order to preserve American democracy? I absolutely will. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Herb, you're next again. Okay. Uh, you said you talked to Claire um, day after you announced. What did she say to you that you can reveal? You did know, you, uh, yeah, you? yeah, okay. Politics are going to be tough and they're going to be mean. And I better get strong. Um, and, but I think I'm strong. I, I, I really, I have a strong conscience. I always think about uh, where and how I need to meet people. I think about the issues. I, I really, am probably the, I'm probably harder on myself than anybody else to do the right thing. And I have faith and I pray every day that I do the right thing. I should say that Claire is a former student and I think very highly of her advice. Yeah, Claire is great. And I listen to her all the time on MSNBC. And I wish she had won. You can't believe how much I wish she had won. <laughs> Thank you, her. Okay, Scott, Cor Scott Orr has a question. Scott? Uh, hello, Trudy. Uh, congratulations. I think you're running an excellent campaign and we wish you well. Uh, our, our splendid uh, hostess, uh, Pam Springsteel, was kind enough to send out a link to your uh, event in St. Louis the other day, which I was privileged to listen to part of. And I was impressed with your response, which was contra to virtually every other candidate on that link, went to the question of, are you for universal uh, health care for everybody or, or something to that effect? And everybody said absolutely yes without qualification. Whereas you said uh, it, you would qualify it because it is too expensive. And whatever we do, we have to be able to afford or we're just simply making promises that we can't keep. And that's not responsible. I was very impressed with you your response, and you stood out from all the other candidates on that thing because of your common sense and, and willingness to stand up and say what the truth was rather than try to palliate everybody with glittering generalities. Would you want to expand on that, your thoughts on health care and what should be done or what shouldn't be done and how we would pay for it? Well, and thank you. And the first thing about not doing Medicare for all and a public health policy is because it would cost $32 trillion. And there are a lot of people that are happy with their health care coverage, with their insurance. But I understand there are people that are falling through, through the cracks and everyone deserves quality and affordable health care. And that's why I think we have to expand the Affordable Care Act. We need to get Medicaid to be able to use more and I, I think we need a public option that can compete against some of these insurance companies so people don't have to pay so much for insurance. Thank you, well spoken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Carl and Mari had their hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, the, um, I have a question just um, regarding the fact that there were already several candidates in the Democratic field before you made the decision to jump in. And I'd like to hear 
your reasoning for um, what, what you feel you bring to the race that's unique and not already re represented in the field of candidates? And thanks for that question. And you know, I, I um, was just looking at things and I ended up being on a Zoom meeting with three other senators, women senators from around the United States. And I listened to them talk and I listened to them talking about the concerns that they had in their states, which were infrastructure, which were voting rights, which for, were cost of basic necessities, you know, things that were everyday things that I know people worry about and, and what I always read about. And because I'm a nurse and I've always put myself out there with other people and trying to help other people and caring about other people and seeing all sorts of things and opening my eyes and my heart and my mind to so much that goes on around me in life. Even when I was 13 and started volunteering in a hospital. And then I, I went on and I got a nursing degree because that made me credible because I love nursing and because I always knew I could take care of myself financially. I didn't need anything. And that's always been important to me. And I wanted to live a life of purpose and service. So even as I was even having six children, I still kept working, uh, working in different nonprofit organizations that were helping people in so many different ways. I love doing that. I was in leadership positions. I have always been on the advisory board of the St. Louis University School of Nursing. I'm on the board of directors, our trustee now of St. Louis University. I've been on the board of my children's school boards. Uh, so I've always had the greatest interest in what is going on and what is going on with all sorts of people and loving being so much with the everyday people that I meet. And I'm not a club person. Uh, I, I, I really like to be with everyday people who are working hard because that's the way I feel I am. And so, and because of all those things and just thinking that over, all of a sudden I was standing there and I said, maybe this is wh what I'm supposed to do at the end of my life. And that is because of the losses that I've had in my life too. And, and becoming more compassionate and loving and understanding because of those losses. And also because even after grieving and you grieve a lot and forever, I felt that I could do something more for other people because I understood what they were going through. I understood what it was to be a widow and, and to lose a husband and to raise six children on your own. And I understand what it means to lose a child from an opioid overdose. And I understand what it means to lose a little sister from a car accident. And I understand what it means to lose a husband from cancer and all the things that you have to go through in medical care and in hospitals. And even though I was a nurse, the, the medical system is still very hard to navigate and everyone needs an advocate. Thank you. Uh, Alice Taylor, uh, Turner has her hand up. Alice, go ahead. Um, so Trudy, thank you for being here today. Um, how would you, a lot of people say they're gun sense candidates and they're pro-choice and those are really hot issues and Missouri is not very good on either of these issues. Um, how would you define yourself in terms of that gun sense issue how will you represent us in Missouri, in the Senate, to make a difference? I will work hard every day to make a difference. And with the guns, we just talked about that. I believe people can hunt. Missouri loves to hunt. I know everyone takes time off to hunt, no matter what. But I still think we have to have some really good gun sense laws in place because the killings that we're having all over this country or her, are horrendous. And these are things that people will never be able to recover from. The families will never be able to recover thinking about the last moments their child was alive, confronted with a guy that was killing everybody. And, uh, and that's, that's where I'm gonna stand on that. 
And as far as the choice for women, I've grown up Catholic, went through Sacred Heart School, went through Jesuit education. I believe in the dignity of all human beings, but I believe in the right for a woman to be able to choose. And I think that choice is between a woman and her doctor. I also believe there's so many children around us that need love and help and care and parenting. And I wanna help those children that are already born. Thank you. Uh, Kathy Jensen. Yes, hello. Uh, my question is what would you uh, first want to work on when you get to the Senate? What is your highest priorities? I, I think the big priority right now is getting costs down. And, um, and that we're gonna have to work on that. I mean, thank, thank goodness that gas, uh, gas prices are going on. I think I wanna work much harder for a strong middle class and good wages and, um, and, and good health care and insurance and good benefits and an ability to retire, a pension, social security, all those kind of things. I would like to see more big businesses and manufacturing companies coming into Missouri so that we can have jobs uh, that people will want to work in and that will be paid well. And I'm still a strong and always will be a strong advocate for unions and for the trades they teach and then the good pay that, they, that the people who work in unions get. And I've been into unions where I see a whole medical unit dedicated to the people that work there, a lot of nurses in it. And they are not only taking care of the union member, they're all also taking care of the families and they're taking care of the physical parts and needs. And they're also taking care of the mental needs, mental health care needs. And they're also trying to help people through addiction. So I think we just need a stronger Missouri we don't want our kids to leave Missouri. In the small towns of Missouri, people hate to see their kids leaving for the bigger towns of Missouri. Jobs everywhere, so people feel they can live good lives and know they can live good lives. All right, let's move on. Uh, Carl and Mari, I hope this one's Carl, because I see Mari stepped out. <laughs> It, it is me this time. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy, for being here. I appreciate it uh, with, with the Mule Skinners. Um, just parenthetically, uh, Claire McCaskill's mother was the first uh, female representative of the Columbia City Council um, and for the Third Ward. Um, so I, I'm trying to carry on that tradition. But let me ask you this question. You know, I'm always interested in relationships, per, per, per primarily parochial relationships when it comes to politics. And that is uh, with respect to municipal politics in general, that's my interest area. You mentioned that you had talked to county leaders and uh, city leaders, mayors, uh, and, uh, and obviously you, will, you may be talking, if you're successful, maybe talking to uh, national leaders. Um, and, and I'm interested in what some of your thoughts are about some of these municipal issues, particularly issues around preemption, state preemption, and how the cities navigate uh, that uh, kind of dangerous minefield, if you will. How do you, what do you, what do you think about ARPA funding and infrastructure funding that's coming down from above uh, and how should the cities handle that? Well, I think the infrastructure funding is unbelievable because it's putting so many people back to work. And, and I think we need that. But when you just said pre, what was the word you used? Preemption. Pre preemption. Preemption. The, the kinds of things where the cities take some action and then the state decides that's not in their best interest for the cities to do that. Yeah, and I, I have to learn more about that. Um, but I think that's where the involvement comes in and, and that's where me being in contact with, with all the state reps and the, and, the, and the state senators and the mayors talking about what money they need and that what money, what they will use that money for and make sure that it goes to the right places. 
is that am I answering that question or is there more to the question that I don't understand? That's that that that, that certainly is sufficient. I, I would encourage you to look into the preemption issue. It's a, it's a primary importance to uh, lots of municipalities. I will, and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Right, right in the back. Okay. I, I, I know I'm looking for a pen right here, but okay, okay. good. We got it. Preemption. <laughs> Good. Right, right, that Johnny, that down. Caleb Hall has his hand up. Caleb, go ahead. Thanks, David. Trying to get this to go down. Oh, <laughs> thanks for coming and speaking uh, with us today, Judy. Um, so, the actor Susan Sarandon has this clip of you taking it out of context at a candidate forum or some event, and she's accusing you of being a turf. I guess I just wanted to use my question to give you a platform to explain that. Uh, maybe give some context to what that clip is. Do you consider yourself a turf? Can you explain? You know, I, okay, good. On that? So I never knew what a turf was. So I'm learning a lot of new things, but look, yeah, things were taken out of context for sure. But I can tell you this without hesitation. I believe in the dignity of all human beings. I have, I am for, the LGBTQ community. I, I am for people being able to love who they want to love. And it's all about love. And that's all I can say. I respect that community. I will stand up for that community. Nobody should be threatened by who they are or by who they want to be. And that's just as much as I can say and I and 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 that's really exactly how I feel. Do you have any other question, though? Did that answer that, Caleb? No, um, no, that's all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Let's go back to Pam Springsteel now. I still need to know what's a turf, <laughs> and then I have a question. Yeah, what is the turf? I, I know I heard it, but I didn't really get it because I also <laughs> felt people were just taking things out of context again, and that's what I'm learning about politics. Maybe Caleb knows. Uh, I watched the clip he was talking about, and it was spelled T E R F, and I'm like, Trudy, I had. Oh, to it yeah, I don't want to take it oh, the dear. way. Emily I really just want to give her trans exclusionary explain. radical feminist. Yeah, there we oh. go. <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My question is, um, what about raising taxes on corporations? Absolutely. Corporations should be paying a hell of a lot more taxes. And you can thank the reason they're not paying those taxes. You, we can thank Donald Trump for that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Pam doesn't want to thank Donald Trump for anything. <laughs> Your point is taken for anything. Okay, Herb, go ahead. A question I ask in one variation or another of almost all candidates for the U.S. Senate and even U.S. House, whom I don't know, is when elected, you will be shortly asked what committees you most want to serve on. You won't necessarily get them, but what are you going to say? I'm going to serve on any committees that have to do with medical care, with health care, with mental health care, with the opioid addiction. I, I want to serve on any committee that has to do with education and affordability. And I love history. I would like an international kind of committee. Look, when I get in there, just as I've had a huge learning curve getting into this race, I'm going to have another huge learning curve. So I'm gonna learn everything I can. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna do as much as I can for Missouri, but I will get better at this every day and every year for sure. I will improve tremendously. I don't see any other question uh, hands raised right now, but some uh, someone asked earlier, Cardinals or Royals? Oh, I'm heading to Kansas City now. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? 
Uh, I, I gotta go halfway and halfway here. Yeah, yeah, I made that mistake once in Kansas City, and oh, they caught me on it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, other other questions. Well, we have Trudy here. She hasn't driven out of out of our range yet, or so. What else? We got a lot of people on today. Glad to have such a large audience. I'm looking for other hands or other questions or comments. Yeah, and 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 what do you what what do you want from me, or what would you expect from me to get your vote? You tell me that. Mm -hmm. Question for the audience. What, what are the polls showing? I, I don't know. You got in the race late, and I don't have any feel on who's ahead. We read every day about the three major Republican candidates and who's ahead and who's not. But I have really not seen anything about the Democrats or the Democratic polls. Uh, are, are, uh, since you got in late, I'm sure you have some polling information. You don't have to share it if you don't want to. But, I, but basically, how's your campaign going? Are you gaining ground? Are you a contender? Or are you a uh, has-been? Are you on the podium yet, one of the top three? Uh, I, are, you, are, are you the first? I, I am an absolute contender. I'm doing really well in the polling. I think our campaign is going great. I think my message is clear. The policies I want to work on resonate with everyone around Missouri. I think they want somebody other than a politician. I think a nurse brings it home for everybody because nurses care so much because they're the most trusted profession in America. And nurses and health caregivers and, and first responders, they put their lives on the line every day to save other people. And I will I will put my life on the line to do everything I can for the people of Missouri. And I will be a mother bear protecting our democracy and our voting rights. Thank you, good answer. David Robertson, have your hand up, go ahead. Uh, well, do you have any thoughts on money and politics? Uh, you know, my adopted son comes from Ukraine and we uh, complain about corruption in places like Ukraine, but uh, the political system in the United States, especially since Citizens United, uh, has just been an uh, open field for corruption, political corruption, and, uh, and we know who wins, uh, that sort of thing. Do you have any ideas? I think we need campaign finance reform because I, I see it clearly in this democratic race. And uh, you know, people that can get their ads up and their messages out more readily have a, a bigger shot of at least a bigger shot of being heard by other people. And um, and I I just think that all these and I haven't taken any uh, big business money. I haven't taken PAC money. I haven't taken any of that. The money that I'm getting is from the people of Missouri, whether it's $10 or a couple of hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. I'm also getting a lot of support from people around the country. And I think that support will happen much more. But I, I'm not gonna be a politician that is bought by other companies or super PACs that wants to do the work that they want them to do. That is totally not where I will ever stand. I will stand for the people of Missouri. I will stand for our democracy and I won't be bought. And I don't wanna do this for power or for ego. I wanna do this to serve the people of Missouri. All right, thank you, Trudy. Uh, Peter Schneeberger again, go ahead, Peter. Thank you, David. Um, I think all of us are looking for a candidate who has a chance to win in November. And, you know, if you can win on August 8th, money's not going to immediately come rolling in. But if you can get close in the polling, money is going to roll in nationally. And from all of us across the state, we will open our wallets because we desperately want to replace Blunt with a better alternative. Are you willing to invest in this campaign between August and September? 
I have invested in this primary a lot and I'm willing to invest more, but I need people to invest in me because then I know they will believe in me and they want me to do this job that I want to do so much. And I think we have to get another Democrat. We have to get a Democrat as a Senator from Missouri. And I believe that I can be the best one. I'm not going in there with a hand grenade to blow up anything. I'm a strong individual. I'm a mom of six. I've grown up with very, very egocentric brothers and men in the family. I've been able to handle that. I've been able to challenge that. Uh, many times I've been able to win out on different issues. And not by fighting, but just by saying, let's be fair, let's get together, let's talk, let's do the right thing. I feel I can do that. I feel that if if my opponent gets in, it's another deal of of fighting and and, and dividing. And I don't want to do either of those things, but I will fight for the people of Missouri. I promise you that. Well, I have a question. Thank you. Let her ahead again. You're you're muted, Herb. Okay, I was going to defer to Mari and Carl. Go first. Oh. And I'll follow. Okay, thanks. Um, my question is about the the general election. Let's fast forward, and and if you were to get the nomination, um, all. All of the leading Republican candidates are leading very ugly, vicious campaigns against each other. And so my question is, um, what would you anticipate in the general election and how well prepared are you for that kind of rough and tumble? I anticipate that the Republicans will vote for me. I really do. I think they're tired of a lot of it unless they're total Trump people that are gonna vote for the person that Trump wants. I think other people are really tired of what's been going on. I'm a moderate Democrat. I, can, I, I will always be a Democrat first and foremost. And, but I will reach across the aisle. I will try to work with people, but always I will stand strong for Missouri families and for the hard work that people do without any question of a doubt. And I'm not gonna be beholden to all the money that people are gonna get for this. The campaign I wanna run is to just do that. Let people help me whatever way they can from around the state and around the country. Because then I know that people want me to do this. And it is, it's a big thing to get more passionate, even though I can so passionate right now, but more feeling I need to do this for the people. And I'm feeling that already. I'm feeling the people want me to do this because they, they want something different. And I'm the difference and I'm the change. And, and I am the change that, that can maybe change a lot of things. I hope I am. It's not working right now. Herb, you said you uh, you were following Maureen. Okay, go, Scott. I'm defer I'm deferring to person after person. Scott. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to do a little bit of a different tack. Uh, what would you be doing to help build up the the state party in Missouri? Because it is not good to be put it in a nice, polite way, and if for some reason you're not able to win, would you stay involved in helping to build up the party statewide? Yeah, I will do everything I can for down ballot people to get the vote. We need to turn more democratic. There are really, really good people that are running in, in their districts and, and for Senate and for, uh, uh, we, we need the help in Jefferson City. Jefferson City is so taken over by Republicans, it's hard to get anything done. We absolutely need more Democrats. 
let's go back to the democratic state we were and when we were a proud state to be democrats and we're from the land of truman let's let's be that again and let's let's show what we can do together and how we can work together and how we can change things the republicans haven't done it for us and i know i need to be in rural missouri more to see why they feel that they've not been heard. I need to hear them. And I'm hearing a lot. I'm hearing about their health care. I'm hearing about the, the hospitals that are closing. I'm, I'm hearing that the ambulances are so late and, and people are worried about all those things. I worry about those things for them as well. And I worry that in rural Missouri, schools are going down to four days a week when you need, when kids need to be in school five days a week. And when ki kids need broadband to be more educated, all those things, it's across Missouri. And I think there are a lot of good people out there that are working hard for, for the people of Missouri. But we sure never hear anything from Josh Hawley, I can tell you that. Amen. All right, since Herb has been such a good job about deferring to people, I'm gonna step in and throw <laughs> a question out. Uh, Judy, you mentioned earlier that you're not, you, things aren't working in Washington and you want to change that. You've also said that you want to work with others, presumably many of those who are currently already in office who you've said things need to be changed. Uh, could you clarify though? Those seem to be contradictory to me. Would you see yourself more as an independent, someone who's going to mess things up or as a team player who's going to try to work with people to get things done? I definitely, I'm running on the Democratic ticket because that's the ticket I believe in. I, I believe in all that I believe in and that we are paying people well, that they're getting good benefits, that they're getting the health care they need. And I think that's so opposite of people that I see running on the Republican side. But in the end, if we don't try to work together and sit down and debate things and then sit back and sit, think critically about what we're doing and the implications of what we're doing and then come back together and negotiate, I don't know how we're gonna get things done. And we don't need Joe Manchin always being separate or Christian cinema separate from everything that the Democrats want. Uh, they need to get together. They need to work with their party. All right, thank you. Herb, I don't see anyone else to defer to. You have to ask your question now. <laughs> um, you, stated, uh, you stated earlier that uh, you were flat-footedly in favor of higher taxes for corporations. I particularly imagine you had large corporations in mind. Do you also favor stronger and more consistent application of American antitrust legislation, Sherman, Clayton, and beyond. There are a lot of industries which are similarly to the tax problem, national, international issues. Oh, there's one corporation based in, in, the Bel in Belgium, for example, that bought up all the beers of Belgium, to my knowledge, all but one of the Netherlands, and even purchased one of our leading brews here in this country. Inbound. Do you favor yeah. stronger? <laughs> a damn sad thing. I beg your pardon? Yeah. I, I told my kids that night, if there's an earthquake, it's a collective rolling over in the grave of our ancestors. The night, the day that it was sold, the day that Anheuser was, was to, to a Belgian country. And company. So, so I, you know, you went in and out here a little bit, but I think you're also talking a little bit about monopolies too. And I, I think you're talking about big businesses being, being um, taxed more. I'm sure you're going to talk about individuals with a lot of money being taxed more. I will always pay my, my taxes and my fair share for sure. And, um, and I think we have some troubles with monopolies, uh, definitely. You know, we've seen that through the um, formula shortage for our for the for our babies, and uh, we we can't monopolize everything. And I know 
things are becoming so big that it's that it seems that way. I mean, Amazon is everywhere. Uh, we just have to look at all those things, and and uh, and they need to pay taxes, and they need to pay road taxes because they're out here every day as I'm driving down the highway with with their big trucks and getting goods out. So, but now you almost got me halfway to Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to cut it off. I hate to cut it off too early, but I know we have to be cognizant of Trudy's time. Uh, I will definitely stick on and answer any questions as best I can, but also I can take information and I can pass along things. Um, so sorry to cut it off too short, but uh, I wanna be cognizant of her time and thank you all for being so generous and asking so many great questions. And, thank you to Trudy if she's still- <laughs> Take the Trudy. Let me just add, I thank you all so much. I really enjoyed talking to you. I thank you for the things that you've taught me. I'm always gonna be learning and that's part of being a leader. And um, and I really hope to get your vote because I hope to th make things better for Missouri and for our country. And I think it's a great thing that a woman can do this. And I've seen my father as a leader. It's come down through our blood and and, and a leader that leads well and that gives back to the community. And that's what it's all about. Thank you so, so yeah, much. Thank everybody. you, Trudy, for taking your time. Thank you, Thank you for taking time with us. Appreciate okay. that. I appreciate Justin you. Hope to see Justin you around, is, okay? You bet. Hope to yes. see, hope you. to see you before November again, all right? And yes, and if right. I don't win this election, you can be darn sure I'm still gonna work on things that I have seen in Missouri. So many people have been so good to me. So many people have taught me so much. I see the needs. I will still be working on those needs too, whether I win or lose, but I want to win. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Rudy. Okay. Bye everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Dustin Bax is, is Trudy's representative here in mid-Missouri. He's currently, he lives in, in Crooksville, but has been spending a lot of time here in Columbia. So he's kind of speaking for her. If there are any other questions, anyone has anything else they would like to ask or to pass along, to, he can make sure it gets passed along to the committee. So anything, okay. Peter Schneeberger, go ahead. I think your hand yeah. was raised early. Just want to say that if you're driving from St. Louis to Kansas City, you have to cross Columbia. So we yep. would like to see her in person at yeah. some events. If she wants our support, she can spare an hour of personal time with us. Right, I'm Dustin? Done. I'm definitely in favor of having her here in Columbia as much as possible. Uh, it's just getting the time out. And I, okay, I one hour between meeting. now and August the 2nd is not too much to ask. One more. Uh, let me throw out was he was here in night? Columbia. Uh, so about a last Friday night. night. Yep. Yes. She was at, we had our log boat last Friday. We had a wonderful turnout, but we're definitely trying to do more. As it is now, I can say that she is planning on being here uh, on the day of the primary. Uh, just having her here in Columbia to visit and to meet with people. So that is okay. one thing that is definitively scheduled already. The primary is hopefully the next time, next time it will be, we just, are, are, I was discussing this with Dustin that, that uh, log boat was noisier than what any of us thought it would be. And he also they found out uh, that the upper level of you know, log boat was not at all ADA compliant. So someone in wheelchair could not get up to the area where we, but he said, fortunately it worked out where Trudy got to meet with them. Someone came in who wasn't able to get up the stairs. So yeah, you live and you learn. So hopefully there will be another uh, opportunity sometime between now and then as she's passing through perhaps. Uh, she had wanted to meet with us today in person, but obviously we don't meet in person and we didn't have even right now, we didn't have time to put something together. But that's definitely something that hopefully Dustin will work on because I think more people would like to see her again just in person. So appreciate a good point, Peter. Other thoughts, any other input for Dustin to pass along to her? Dustin, I just want to say, yeah, thank you for her being available today. I did get to meet her. I am currently disabled and I met her down the steps on oh, Friday. Okay. And that was really good. And at the time she told me she was going to try to make mule skinners. Um, but just what I wanted to say is that if she doesn't win the primary, I hope she really is generous with her support to other candidates, mm -hmm. including our, our well, whoever our Senate candidate is, because we really need to take Missouri back. 
and uh, we're only going to do that by electing Democrats. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And I will just say that uh, internally, I can say that we've had the conversation that if we do win the Senate primary and we move on, we are, as a campaign, completely in favor of helping build up an aggressive, coordinated campaign uh, that we statewide and help out with every single Democrat that's on every ballot across the state. So that is something we are in favor of. Great. Good. Dustin, do you know if you have a formal endorsement from uh, John Danforth? I do not know if we have a formal one. I know, I know Trudy and John have talked uh, much. Uh, as far as formal goes, I don't know definitively. I'll, we could, truthfully. Uh, we have a very long list of uh, prominent people from across the state who have endorsed us, but I'm happy to get back with you on that, actually. Yeah, I think that would be a huge help uh, across but the I aisle getting a few votes. I he's think he talked, another John Wood. Into, he talked an independent candidate into coming into the race. So I don't know. It's very odd. Uh, I'm going to add, too, he's actually spent quite a bit of money. I believe it's several hundred million dollars on this candidate. I may have read that wrong, but it is a lot of money that he has spent. Mm -hmm. David Robertson has his hand have, up. Uh, yeah, a question for Dustin. Uh, mm -hmm. Your candidate is, I think, got a good uh, strategy of saying that she's not been a politician and she's got very articulate uh, positions on important issues. Um, but I wonder if you can characterize, since you're inside the campaign, the kind of good political help that she has. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, Senate, that ain't beanbag. You know, these are Mitch McConnell and these guys are tough customers. Somebody's got to know something. Uh, can you reassure us that uh, you have a team uh, that's uh, going to um, make her win if she gets this nomination? So we have uh, internally, as far as our campaign goes, we have a wonderful team of people who are all definitively lifelong Missourians. They, or they have at least spent the bulk of their careers here. They've just made lives here in Missouri. And we've been very pro, like Missouri first. With a lot of campaigns of this size, it's really common to start pulling in people from across the country. But we've made an effort. No, we want people here, people who are in the communities and are happy to go out and actually just be a part of it. Uh, we have a wonderful group in mind. There are a number of advisors we have. Uh, as far as our media team, we're actually having uh, GPS Impact is handling it, but the actual GPS Impact person that, that is handling it has been working in Missouri politics since the mid-90s, and uh, she's been an advisor. She was actually a member of Jay Nixon, of Governor Nixon's actual administration. So we have a strong presence here in Missouri, and we are definitely surrounding Trudy with the best people possible. Dustin, I... Her, I know she's not been a politician. She says that's kind of what we need is new people. New people. None of the Senate candidates, I don't think any of them have any political experience. So they're all coming in fresh from that point of view. What sets her apart? Why should we support her versus some of the others who've also been involved in frontline work, service work, and helping other organizations like she has done? So what makes, makes her different than all the other Democratic candidates running for Senate? So I actually, I love just a number of the candidates that are running. I want everyone to know that. I just happen to be working for this one. Trudy is paying me. I love her as a person. I think she is the most qualified candidate. And this is my personal opinion. Uh, but when it comes down to it, to answering your question, it's a matter of, they may not have been politicians, but I think a lot of people who are running for the US Senate in general, probably think like a politician and they think politically as far as it goes. So this is a matter of, they are so wonderful people, but they're playing politics still. Trudy's not in this for power. She's not in this for money. She's not in this to play politics. She's in it to help Missourians, to actually help bring up the state of Missouri and to be as involved as she can. And when she, whenever she makes her claim, that's actually where I would take it. She doesn't think like a politician. She thinks like a nurse. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Pam, you have your hand up. Pam Springsteel. I just want to make sure that you don't forget that I have more announcements to make. I do want people to, you know, to ask to talk to Dustin while he's here. I would just say one last thing that if anybody is interested in literature that they want to give give out to their friends or neighbors or even yard signs, I, tr I do my best to keep the Boone County headquarters as stocked as possible. So that is something if you're interested. And if you're not, you can also get a hold of me with the information that's been passed along. And I'm happy to bring stuff out to you. 
So, yeah, but as I, it is now, go you. ahead, Al. Yeah, I was just gonna say there are her signs as well as literature at the office. I noticed them yesterday. They're very nice signs. Someone yeah. wants them. The we'll problem is getting them on the ground, Dustin. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dustin, I think you uh, did. I think I saw your email in the chat earlier. Uh, if mm -hmm. you didn't put it out there, make sure you put it out there so that anyone has any questions. It's it's in the announcements. It's in the announcements. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. That's right. I saw it earlier. Thank you, Pam. All right. Well, let's, we've got a few minutes left. Sorry, we're not going to get to hear from Carl today, but Carl, why don't we plan on maybe working you in next week at the beginning on when we ask for candidates to speak, if you can maybe throw in 10 minutes on the yeah, five yeah, 10 no, minutes. No, on. The, the important step with, I mean, we had some you know, stuff prepared. I think context is important. The race is important, obviously, but Senate races are very important. So I'm glad that he was able to spare, spare as much time as possible. Um, I'd be happy to do that uh, in the future. I, I'll fill in wherever it's necessary, if that's what's necessary, and let's hear the rest of the uh, announcements. Very good. Okay, Pam, I'll let you go back to screen sharing again and fin finish up your announcements, Thanks, please. Justin. Thank Thanks, you. Justin. Again. Okay. Um, next Tuesday, the 26th, we have the Women in Politics Forum at Windsor Auditorium.